What's up, Bike Rumor fans? I'm here with the all new Niner E Rip 9, which is their first e bike. There's actually two ones. The other one's the EWFO, which is just a monsterly big bike. We'll cover that one in the full post. This one's more a review of the E Rip, which I think is going to be the more all arounder kind of e bike. So it's 150 millimeters of travel in the rear. 160 millimeter fork up front, which is bigger than the non-electric assist version of their RIP-9. So their analog RIP-9 is now 140 in the back, 150 up front. This one goes bigger on travel. You might notice one big change on this. This is not Niner CVA suspension. This is a four bar linkage, horse link, FSR, whatever you want to call it. Totally different suspension design because they had to work around the Bosch motor. So. We'll go over a quick specs on this one, a little run through of the bike, and then we'll get it out on the trail and show you how it rides. The first thing you notice about Niner's new e-mountain bikes is just how big the down tube is. It's a big bike, but they did a good job of keeping their updated aesthetic in place with the bent sloping top tube. The frames use 6061 alloy with a cast and machined one piece motor mount. Chainstay and seat stay yokes are forged, one piece parts, and everything is oversized and wide to create a very stiff, strong structure. The battery is hidden inside the down tube and protected by a removable cover plate. The RIP E9 comes in three frame sizes, small, medium, and large, and they manage to get a single water bottle mount inside the front triangle on all three. Oversized black oxide bearings are used at every pivot point on the rocker arm, including the shock's trunnion upper mount. The shock's lower mount sits inside a flip chip, allowing you to change the geometry between low and high. All cables run internally, with the rear shift cable sitting very close to the chain ring. While it looks precarious, we never heard or felt it rub the moving parts. The cockpit gets Niner's lock-on flange grips, and the backlit Bosch Purion control display. There's a walk assist button to help you get up those inevitable hike-a-bike sections. KS dropper post remote, and alloy race face bar and stem round out the package. With any big bike, we needed big trails to test it on. I headed to Canuga Bike Park in Hendersonville, North Carolina for a day of runs on their groomed and natural downhills. Canuga offers a mix of natural terrain, roots, rocks, jumps, drops, and anything else you'd need to see how a bike handles. It's also purpose-built for e-bikes with a single one-way climb back to the top. The Niner RIP E9 handled it all brilliantly, although it did reveal a bit of tuning needed to get the suspension ready for big landings and hard hits. Niner recommends 30% sag, which is where I started, but as you'll hear in a few seconds, this definitely bottomed out the shock on a simple 2-3 foot drop. In the meantime, it's worth talking about this horse length suspension. Niner says they can move away from their more climbing friendly CVA design here because the motor is doing so much of the work for you on the way up. So their focus was on keeping the rear wheel stuck to the ground and offering the most supple responsive suspension design they could for technical terrain and descents. It works. As you're seeing here and in the next segment, the bike keeps its grip of the ground quite well. Now, here's that bottom out landing. Oh man. After this, I pumped the rear shock up a bit to 25% sag, which worked well to prevent bottom out, but once back on my local trails, which are decidedly more cross country, it lost that small bump compliance and felt a little rough on the little stuff. My hunch is a volume spacer or two in the rear would get it to that right mix of small bump sensitivity and big hit support. So the Niner is great on the big descents, but how about the climbs? Because what goes down must go up. The Bosch CX line is ultra smooth and even on the lower assist settings makes otherwise grunt worthy climbs fast, fun, and as easy and effortless as you feel like making them. Just put it in a higher setting if you want to work less or drop it down to work a little harder. So this is the best part is right now we're just climbing back up to the start of the runs. Done this like five or six times today. 
and it's amazing and they're literally racing up the hills it's like a really is a totally different sport we got it on turbo mode to kill the rest of the battery on our last run of the day it's worth noting a couple of things about my setup first the bike came with the shock in the high setting after a couple of runs and thinking that this bike was lacking that niner magic I switched it to low and it felt way, way better. Second, I replaced the stock Yari fork with the new RockShox Zeb, which has a slightly taller axle to crown measurement and likely slackened the heading allow another quarter of degree or so. One thing that surprised me for a bike this big is how stable the steering is at low speed. Not that you're going slow on the climbs with a big motor on this bike, but there's no wheel flop or fighting with the steering when the terrain limits your speed. The RIP E9 has a good balance of high and low speed handling for both descending and climbing. And even with this much travel, it's still nimble and playful enough for less aggressive trails. The one small complaint I had was a slight rattling noise on rough trails. Fortunately, it's not the cables running through the frame. Unfortunately, it turned out to be the battery having a bit too much room to move inside the down tube. Our test bike was an early production model that arrived about a month before launch. Niner says it's seen a couple of updates since then, the most important being that the battery cover has been updated to better lock things into place, and that this solved the issue, but I thought it only fair to mention. Okay, what about battery life? So this thing's got a massive battery on it, like 600 some kilowatts, I'll have the official specs up, probably here is a little subtitle because I don't have it right in front of me, but um, we were out for... Mm, almost uh, four hours doing a lot of back and forth filming and riding and stuff maybe about hour 30 to hour 40 of actual like real riding moving time and stuff and most of the time i was on eco and touring but you can see here like uh so most of my ride time was there or there one bar of battery so if you were out not killing it and honestly like the eco mode on this was plenty it was almost just enough to compensate for the weight of the bike and then be riding more like a normal bike and then um touring was just like so much boost for kicking around through single track and stuff the other two moods uh, modes like you would need those if you were climbing a ton or something so the great thing is you could literally take this thing out for hours on regular trails and have plenty of battery life hey thanks so much for watching if you like this and you want more great bike reviews check out our channel on youtube hit subscribe hit like leave a comment if you got questions about this bike or head over to the full post on bikerumor.com. Just search Niner or E-Rip and you will find that post or check the link in the description of this video and check out some of the other great videos we've got. Thanks a ton. Now shut down that YouTube and get out and ride.